Hey everybody. All right. So the job market is broken and this is about software engineering. I know this actually applies to a greater, uh, greater industries out there, but this video is specifically about software engineering. And before we had all this mess, we actually had the whole crazy hiring process to begin with. So now it's even worse. Um, I'm going to go into some of the reasons why things are so bad. Uh, so for starters, if we go back to what was going on in 2022, uh, during the hiring boom, that's about when everything ended because COVID came around in the spring, essentially, of 2020, and everybody had to work from home. Everybody was consuming more Netflix. Everybody was taking that time to learn a new technology or new, uh, new this or that. So online education took a, a, a they, they, they had a major boom. Netflix had a major boom. We had things like you know Tiger King going viral during those periods. Uh, but the bottom line, everybody was home. And companies had to hire more, not just to build the infrastructure, but there was just simply a ton of hiring. And it's a snowball process. And once you see your neighbors are hiring a bunch of people, then you're going to be hiring. And it kind of goes in flow with the same layoff thing, right? Well, one company starts a big layoff. They get a bunch of negative publicity. Other companies start joining in. And it's just like, again, a snowball process. So we're seeing that layoff snowball process now, but in 2020, to 2022 it was a hiring process it was a major boom so this article here talks about how companies like peloton they were having a major explosive growth during the pandemic because that's another thing working out uh, became a popular thing to do it in your home because you couldn't go to gyms anymore so there was all this like speculation and, and nobody knew how long it was going to take but ultimately there was a huge hiring process and then that followed a big purge so just in the last couple of years uh, this article talks about Amazon shedding 18,000 jobs and then Salesforce shedding 8,000. Since the beginning of this year, uh, just halfway through the year, we've already lost 64,000 jobs uh, in the IT market. Those are mostly software engineers. And then you also have to keep in mind the amount of college graduates entering the market every single year. So this article shows that when we had the major learn to code boom, that went on for a long time. It really started, I would say, during the Obama administration where it's like everybody should learn how to code. And then we saw an explosion of just like online boot camps and all this other stuff. In fact, I still see ads today. Like I saw an ad the other day on YouTube where it was this guy. He's talking about how you can be a software engineer earning major money in just a couple of weeks if you take this guy's course. I mean, it's such a slime ball move because it's just simply not going to work. Boot camps are not going to work college degrees at Ivy League universities are barely working. So during that time from 2013 to 2014, so in one year we had 51,700 graduates in the United States with a computer science degree. If you fast forward 10 years to 2022, there was 112,720 college graduates entering the market every year. That was a, a over 200% increase. Um, and then if you fast forward from 2022 to 2023, there was another 4.3% increase from there. So we have seen a little bit of a slowdown lately, but you have to keep in mind when we're shedding 64,000 jobs this, this year alone, you know, you have tons of graduates also entering looking for a job. And that has nothing to do with the self-taught developers and, you know, business owners and just people changing their careers. So I might have misspoke earlier, but um, this article talks about in the first half of this year, the first five months, that 284 technology companies had shed jobs in the first five months. Microsoft just reported that the $82 billion a year in profit is not enough. They just saved another $500 million in AI costs. And again, they shed 9,000 jobs and plan to shed more. But not only has this hurt our ability to actually find the job, we've actually hit a wall when it comes to salary. And actually, we're seeing a deflation in salary. So it used to be for the longest time, the millennial generation and newer, they were actually changing jobs all the time to uh, for career growth, for for money, you know, wage growth. So if you jumped around, you could always make more money. But now you could see that it's starting to balance out between staying at your job and switching jobs. There's not hardly any incentive to switch a job right now. This article from Business Insider goes into it even more that it just doesn't make sense anymore. It's bare, it's about even. However, the bottom line is that we saw this overhiring, but the biggest issue that we've had with the job market has come, and it's the biggest issue that we've had in 70 years, and this actually occurred in 2022, and it was due to a time bomb that actually got introduced in 2017. 
See, politicians these days, when they're passing legislation, they actually have an expiration date for when these tax breaks and incentives and things expire. And that's typically into the next term so that you can blame the next people that are in power for the problems from yesteryear, basically. So for the last 70 years, companies were able to fully deduct research and development spending immediately. This was a huge deal. So this means that if you're doing research and development, which is what most software development was con considered, you could actually write off an entire year's worth of an, an engineer's salary as a tax deduction, a tax write-off, in order to reduce your tax liability since it's basically a loss. So for startups, most of those companies were not actually profitable, and they had a lot of software engineers that they were trying to drive a product towards profitability. I mean, we've seen this so many times in the IT world. And the bottom line is that they could uh, write off the, those engineer salaries to get to where they needed to be. But with the legislation with Trump's tax cuts in 2017, it actually uh, stipulated here, uh, you can see in 2017, that in the year 2022, in the year 2022, this tax deduction was no longer going to apply. So for 70 years, it changed from being able to write off everything immediately to you could you had to amortize your write offs over a five year period. So for one engineer's salary, you could only write off 20 percent of it uh, in that year. So companies saw humongous tax increases essentially overnight. So here's an article from 2023 software firms across the U.S. facing massive tax bills that threaten tech startup world survival. So overnight, companies were seeing a 300% increase in their taxable income. And you had to then resort to layoffs. So addition to the layoffs, you also had just simply the fact that companies were not going to hire as much uh, as many engineers. You have less money going into research and development. Again, that's a snowball effect because you just simply have less products going out the door and less people. This article from Axios shows that 73% of respondents say that their companies had a, uh, a negative financial impact from the 2022 change. Some 44% of respondents said it forced operational changes, including canceled projects and layoffs. So the bottom line is during the Biden administration, when this thing actually uh, went into effect in 2022, nothing was done about it. And we're now seeing the results of this two years later. And it's been massive. So this article here talks about the fact that it basically penalized research and development in the United States and that companies then took their domestic research and development and it pushed them out into countries like Canada, India, Germany, and China. So you could have little sub companies or shell companies set up in those areas and abide by tax laws for those countries and shift a lot of your research and development out of the United States and into other countries. It also goes in to talk about the fact that Canada essentially was doing what the United States was doing. They offer a refundable tax credit programs, allowing immediate write-offs, unlike the U.S. system. So basically, these idiots in elected positions knew for quite a while that we had these, uh, these warning signs that companies were going to shift their research and development overseas, and that's exactly what they did. Multiple articles here are supporting that. Cross-border effects of research and development tax incentives. Here's one from the Wall Street Journal. Companies reconsider research and spending with a tax deal held up in the Senate. All right, so that brings us to where we are now. And that is that in 2023, ChatGPT released OpenAI, uh, or OpenAI released ChatGPT. And uh, clearly, AI is generative AI is now integrate, integrated and ingrained in the IT software development. Uh, experience. I'll do other videos on this though, as far as productivity on that, because that the, the productivity factor is up in the air. But m the bottom line is, companies think everybody can be way more productive with generative AI, and we see articles that that support that. So this is saying that the AI cuts may be underreported. This one's talking about 200,000 jobs have been shed this year. I don't know the figure I said earlier, but the numbers are all over the place and it's difficult to, to judge uh, for sure ex the exact numbers. Uh, but here you can see that basically there's just all this uncertainty out there as far as uh, hiring new workers and then also at the same time offshoring. So everybody's looking to save money, whether it's offshoring um, to, to cheaper countries or using AI or a combination of both. And you can see that it goes on and on here. So 
Salesforce is specifically talking about the fact that they can save a bunch of money hiring overseas, and that's exactly what they're doing. Here's the CEO of Amazon talking about the fact that we will need less people doing the work. Here's evidence showing Indeed and Glassdoor to cut 1,300 jobs amid AI integration. So the only good news in all of this is that that massive spending bill that they just did that's going to raise the national debt by like another $5 trillion or whatever it might be, the thing that caused Elon Musk and Trump to start fighting like children, um, that has now passed. But the good news is in that bill that they're actually reversing this tax rule and they're actually making it retroactive. So this article talks about how the big, beautiful bill may have just quietly boosted big tech earnings. So Microsoft and those companies can write off even more money. Um, you know, the one thing I also didn't mention is that interest rates used to be very low. Now they're much higher. Uh, it was very cheap to borrow money and to spend it on research and development. And now that money is more expensive to borrow and you can't write it off. However, they just changed the rules. So maybe if the interest rates go down at some point, we can see a spike in, uh, in hiring again. And that's probably what it's going to take. Um, but, the, you know, the future of research and development expensing, at least they have now retroactively um, fix that problem that was introduced in 2022 that is certainly affecting a lot of companies. Um, so the question is going to be whether or not corporate greed will win out though, right? Because uh, corporate greed will continue to just try to find the cheapest uh, labor possible. And the question is going to be, is the damage already done? Is it not recoverable? Um, we're about to find out. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you're into VR, de uh, not development, I'm into VR development. I created this video game, though, King Crab. It's coming out later on. It's cool. It's unique. It's completely created by me. It's not a retread of anything that's out there. So don't steal my idea. Uh, I'm just kidding. Also, check out my website, CodeHawk.com. If you're learning the code, I have courses on there. Um, need to update it. It's been a little while. But uh, over 50 courses there if you want to learn with me.